What's going on, guys, and welcome back. Let's talk Proxima Midnight today, who's the last discard card to come out in, in the foreseeable future, guys. Not a lot in the pipeline in terms of the archetypes, so really the last chance. We've had Black Knight have its own archetype. We have Hela having her own thing that everybody hates. Uh, and then we've got the dependable discard trying to make its way back, and it's definitely kind of aiming towards that direction. Is she going to be enough to really elevate the archetype to dominant competitive play? Or she's skippable and not really adding much to an already tight list. Let's go to break down everything you need to know. The best decks. Is she five star, one star? Should you buy her? Let's jump in. So who is Proxima Midnight? She is a member of Thanos' Black Order and one of the best combatants of the Mad Titans army. She possesses great strength, agility, and fighting ability. And I mean, we see this in the MCU. She single-handedly kicks Black Widows and Akoya's ass, about to kill him, and then... Uh, you know, they use the Game Shark cheat codes and the Avengers have Scarlet Witch and they throw her up and she dies. I don't want to die that way. In Marvel Snap, she's a four cost seven power card. When she is discarded, she's going to jump to the lowest powered location available. That isn't full. This obviously adds a ton of value for the discard archetype, being able to get to closed off locations. And most importantly, just getting a free seven power most of the time. Listen, guys, it's not often that a card comes in the snap and immediately belongs into an archetype, and it really has no reason to be left out. Outside of obviously like Hella, Black Knight, they're doing their own thing. Kind of core classic discard apocalypse is always going to want Proxima Midnight. Think about X-23 and Destroy. You're already trying to destroy things, right? You get the null up, get the death down. X-23 just fits into that deck. Proxima is just going to work with the game plan and, and the win lines that you're trying to achieve with the base apocalypse build. But there's no reason not to play her. A lot of the times, you're not even going to try, and you're going to get the free power that she gives. And then also, if you can get like a Modoc down on five or six, it's just a ton of free power all at once. Is she going to elevate different styles of play? Does Corvus really help her out? Do you need Corvus? We're going to break all that down today after playing her a ton. Let's start with the star ratings. Now, let's kick it off with the competitive tier. And as all cards that are really pigeonholed into one specific archetype, it's kind of tough to rank this. I'm going to say right off the bat, guys, if it's not discard, she's just not a great card. These stars are all for if you're playing her in the deck she belongs in. And with that, I'm going to give her a 4.5. I think she's one of the better discard options to come out. Not exactly just a I'm going to win the game kind of card, but really adds pressure to your opponent. And she always targets the lowest powered lane, meaning you can play her early if you need to get a blade out on turn one with 10 power play there. Or if you need to storm a lane, have her jump into there or maybe Modoc on the last turn and put a lot of power on the board. She has a ton of playability within the archetype, and that's why I give her a 4.5. Now, as far as stars go, that's just about as high as it gets. Flexibility is the lowest I can give, like a half a star here. Clearly, only discard. Yes, you could do some cheeky things. Maybe we'll have some type of hybrid value deck, but for now, it's really only working in the discard archetype. So I'm gonna give her about a one star here, maybe a half a star. Really, it doesn't matter. She just doesn't belong really anywhere else. Now, as far as the fun factor goes, it's always tough kind of rank in this category. I, I don't think she's like, you know, a blast of fun to play, but she definitely makes discard more fun. Discard is very kind of A to B, very linear in the play style, and she adds a bit more complexity and thought lines and play lines, and that's for you and your opponent, so I definitely think that's a great thing. Uh, I'm going to give her like a 2.5 here in the fun category. And then as far as balance, I honestly have no idea. I mean, they could change her. They could maybe lower the power. I doubt it. She feels pretty spot on. I don't think she's going to get buffed either. Uh, the cost isn't going to go down. I think four cost is, is doing what they're trying to achieve here. I'm going to give it kind of like straight down the middle, 2.5. They could buff. They could nerf. I don't see either. So maybe I could give it lower, but 2.5 feels safe. Now, before my final thoughts, let's go ahead and talk about the synergies, right? Does she synergize with her husband, Corvus? What are the best cards to pair her up with in discard outside of just today's deck? If you guys want to build your own, what were the best synergies that I found? Let's go ahead and kick it off with the MVPs. And at the top of the top, it's got to be Modoc. Obviously, not even trying. Modoc is going to help out Morbius and get everything kind of cooking for the deck. A lot of your game plan relies around Modoc, and naturally, that is going to be her best pair. Uh, her husband, Corvus, is clearly good. He's a three-cost card. Getting rid of her is not getting rid of another card, and you get to play her down, and you get the plus energy. So all of that just kind of synergizes perfectly together. On that note, other targeted discard cards are going to work like Blade, clearly. Not so much Calling Wing or Lady Sif. Most of the time, she's not going to be the highest cost or the lowest in the deck. Hellcow clearly is getting rid of two cards, so, you know, more discards, the better for her. And then Storm and Dracula. Storm is fantastic to shut down a lane on turn three. And, you know, all you have to do is try to get nine plus power into that lane. And most of the time, you're going to win it with her jumping to that being your lowest lane. 
And Dracula's fantastic for multiple reasons. She can jump and help Dracula. You can discard and get the power from him at the end of the game. A lot of ways to utilize Dracula and his kit here. Now, as far as other synergies go, obviously I could put like every single discard thing in here, right? Even like Apoc, Morbius. But as far as like what really works with her, if you want to do the double up approach, clearly Moon Girl is a lot of fun to get multiple Proximas and then Modok all that away and build up a Morbius. There's a lot of cool ways to test out the archetype there. The more chaotic discard cards with great value or trade-offs like Gambit, Moon Knight, and Swordmaster are arguably going to be making some pretty cool lists if we can form enough cards that want to be discarded and Proxima being one of the best. Iron Man is cool because if you play him down, Proxima could just go and jump to that lane that looks empty, but all of a sudden has 14 power. Gotta love that play and it's going to be super cheeky most of the time. And then things like Goose, right? Or just locations that prevent your opponent from getting in there or playing big power cards. You know, Goose could be tough unless they have Zabu. So adding seven power to a Goose lane could be pretty damn good. All right, guys. So in a nutshell, should you get Proxima Midnight? If you play Discard, it's a no-brainer. No question. She's doing what you're trying to do, adding to your win lines. You're already trying to discard. She just adds to that. If you're a big Black Knight Hella gamer, uh, she can work with Hella. Black Knight, I, I think, is fine. It it's okay. What I love about her, though, is there's a couple of different decks that we can play, and those are the ones we're going to showcase today. For those of you guys that just want a great, dependable, competitive discard deck with great stats and pretty easy, obvious play lines, that's going to be one deck that's more of the safe collector version. But what I'm going to be doing today in showcasing is my first attempt of an attack discard deck. Things like Moon Knight, we've never been able to play to great success. Being able to take out key cards of your opponents is massive, and we have cards that want to be discarded. Gambit is an obvious uh, first love as well. And then we can combine all this with the power of Morbius, and then obviously get things like X-23 to get us ramping into things like Black Bolt to discount a stature. A lot going on here. We're going to jump into those decks and look at the aggressive and then the more defensive and safe play. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start it off and do the quick analysis on something that you guys are already familiar with, and that is going to be our collector discard. This is the, the safer deck, as I've alluded to. And again, just a ton of different ways to win with the deck via Morbius, Collector, a bunch of swarms. You can get Apoc big, Dracula can soak up power, Proxima going into uh, hard locations to help you out, Helicarrier providing you different bonuses and cards to either counter your opponent or just play unexpected power. We can ramp easily. We have a ton of different ways to get the cards out that we want. And ultimately, this just has great play line after great play line. I can't tell you how many times Helicarrier has come in clutch. And really, it just boils down to the twos and the fours. Morbius and Collector hold down the power. Dracula and Proxima add a little bit bonus to that. And that's how you're going to win a good chunk of your games. Really enjoy the deck, but the main focus today is our attack discard deck. And guys, this is an absolute cook, so bear with me, but it has been slapping for me so far, as uh, you guys can see from the small sample size. And really, guys, what we're trying to do is attack the opponent's hand aggressively, but not making that the only thing the deck does. Now, you're going to notice I don't have Silver Samurai in the deck, uh, mainly because we have a couple ramp options so we can successfully play Black Bolt. We already have kind of what we need in that department. You guys are absolutely free to flex him in here if you want to go that route. Now, the Black Bolt and Stature is definitely the most spicy. Like, what is that doing in there? And mainly, guys, you can replace this with, like, Blade and Swarm, something like that. But I got to say, it works a ton of the time. We can get out and play Black Bolt early because a lot of the ramp options. X-23 always feels good. I typically hang on to her. Uh, never really playing her unless there's something like a Death Domain out there. Uh, you've got, obviously, Morbius to scale up in power. But Gambit... Moon Knight are massive. Moon Knight can just destroy their deck. Gambit can destroy their board. And then you're doing all this with stature at a discounted rate. Black Bolt's also great. You could go with Wong if you want to get even more cheeky. But I felt like this was a perfect balance of attacking their hand a few times while building up our side. And then ultimately, we have some fail safes like Hella. And then again, Hella Carrier. Now, really, guys, the main thing to learn here is when to play which card. You don't always play Moon Knight. You don't always play Corvus. You have to evaluate what's going on in your hand, what you have left in the deck, and then obviously who you're playing against and what deck they have, right? Holding on to Moon Knight or Black Bolt for later turns can help out a ton on finishing, let's say, a Nimrod combo and getting rid of their destroyed cards that they're holding on to. A lot of careful ways to play this, and you just need to look at your hand, see if Hela's still in there. Great way to play Hella, right? You're not just getting rid of big random cards. You're just trying to bring back a couple of the cards that maybe you accidentally discarded along the way of being offensive with the deck. Uh, Apoc is one that you typically need to be playing out uh, either on turn five with Corvus, or you can get away with playing just a big Apoc on turn six, and he can absorb a lot of the blows via Corvus, Moon Knight, and Gambit. 
Uh, Gambit, love to play him on turn three. If they played uh, Zabu, Jeff, you just got to look at which cards are very important to them. You know, if they have armor or if they're playing like a Wolverine, uh, clearly it's not the best time to play Gambit and you need to prioritize other options. Morbius, most of the time, just make sure you get him down in time. Uh, stature is a nice bonus. Uh, if you get Corvus and you have seven energy, you can play Stature and Hella together, Stature and Apoc. Uh, Black Bolt is always a nice option to play, but it's kind of the last resort on turn five if you don't have anything else. Clearly, uh, you can play him on turn four with Corvus as well. There's not really anything bad you get rid of at any time. There are cards that give you better chances to win like Hella, but most of the time it's going to play out to a, a good success. Again, a lot of flexibility here. We're going to go ahead and showcase attack discard, but I think there's a lot of room for the archetype to grow. Okay, Jin is our opponent. We have Danger Room X23 is looking ready to go. Um, could risk this. Not going to. We're going to leave X23 in the hand for now. Not a lot of reason to ramp. I mean, I guess if we play that, it killed it. We could play Corvus early, but uh, we're going to wait. Okay, Forge looks like obviously a destroyed deck here. We have Mirror Dimension. Still going to hang out. Not going to do anything yet. Okay, X23. Jin, you play a lot of Destroy. Nowhere's cool for Morbius. Uh, we might want to actually go that route. So that we don't get rid of anything too important. We could go Moon Knight. Looking at our options, I think this uh, is going to make the most sense, though. So. Beautiful uh, variant game over here from Jen. Okay, love you, X23. Fantastic. Two Nowheres makes things that much more difficult. We can start attacking with Moon Knight. Obviously, there's cards he's going to want to keep. Corvus is also super tempting now. Uh, Modok is fine. Oh, I kind of want to go with... Let's go with Corvus. And we're going to hope that either Hela doesn't die or maybe Moon Knight doesn't die. We have Proxima. Modok's not a bad play either. Of course, Jin got that. That makes sense. Modok, Proxima. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I think we just play the Hela now. I suppose we could Black Bolt now, though, too. Black Bolt's kind of major for the deck this guy's playing. Black Bolt's kind of major. Modok isn't half bad. The thing is, Modok's probably not going to trigger, so I do think we go Black Bolt here. He's not going to be able to kill these other ones unless he has Destroyer, which this guy probably does. You just know it, right? He goes Luke Cage. Wow, what? All right, we killed Deathlock. This guy has literally no cards in his hand, so uh, feeling pretty good about that. And then I think we go Hella. Uh, this is going to be interesting, right? Because of Modok. I think we go Hella. Stature. I mean, there's a couple of ways we still lose this, mainly being Hella hates us. Danger Room could just screw us here massively. On hail Hydra. He goes the final play with a double Nico. What on earth, Jin? Minions. I like me. the boldness. Actually, kind of close, kind of crazy. Modok almost hated us there. But we got the dubs. We'll, we will take it. Victory. Not bad at all. Danger Room was extremely nice to us. Didn't kill our X23 and just let the rest of our cards live. But uh, that is why I like the attack discard. Okay, spicy chai. We have Stature, Hella, Morbius, and Corvus. And uh, definitely like the opening hand here. D couple statues, couple Morbius. Mindscape is semi-problematic, but by then we should have, you know, most of our game plan done. With him not playing, man, I almost just want to snap here, but I think he'd just be out. Oh my god. Two turns with each other's decks. This is a wild game. All right, so Corvus. Double Gambit is, is awesome, but he hasn't played anything. Corvus is insane. We could just get rid of legit everything here. Uh, and I don't think we want to do that. I, 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 yeah, I don't think we want to do that. Do we do nothing this turn? It, definitely awkward, but we're going to do nothing. Okay. Well, the statue's free, so that works out. And then we got the Moon Knight. Okay, this is, hmm. We're going to hope he has Hela in his hand. That's our, that is our game plan. We're going to hope he has Hela. 
and we're gonna just start getting rid of cards like crazy snap. we're gonna snap to we kind of want to get rid of our hella by the way because we don't want to give it to him might be a little down to play stature here but it's fine all right he's got double vision we kill the Odin. we lose the gambit we kill the doom oh my god so he could have hella At least we're giving him a bunch of garbage yo this hella like our hella though is is this is scary okay uh honestly i think we just corvus over here i think that's our best play guys okay we got rid of the hella thank god um I suppose that's fine. What is this? Okay, let's go double APOC. Okay, not a bad play. What's our last? Okay, well, obviously we go Proxima. So, um, I think it's a bit of a dicey win, but I think we can do it, guys. We'll take it. Oh my god, just pure out-battled the hella deck. It didn't get hella, or even if it did, it really didn't matter. He didn't have a lot of space to work with. What a weird game. All right, we got Morbius, Modok, Black Bolt, little X-23. We're going to hang on to her. Uh, love the curve play we have here. Morbius uh, usually is a decent play there. We'll go Throne Room. I like that a ton. Compete with whatever he's got. Collector. That'll be a good battle. It looks like we might get a free statute if he's playing that deck. Rickety Bridge. Could be great for X-23. Looking with what we have, I don't hate our moon knight here i almost don't even hate playing it mid and like challenging him to play there i think we're gonna do that okay he goes corvus So great Moon Knight hit on our part. We get rid of obviously just a Helicarrier card. That collector is booming. But we can Modok now. If we Modok now, we get the Hella too. And we have Proxima that goes out. Okay, so we're definitely going to Modok. Sadly, Proxima... This is one of those instances where Proxima dies. Just dies, right? Because Proxima is definitely going to go to Rickety Bridge. It's going to be a sad day, but... Oh, that's annoying. I am reborn. Then again, I gave it to him. But we do get the Moon Knight back, so we still dis uh, discard the red amount. Okay. Oh, we can Absorbing Man then? Yo, what is this? Okay. Okay. Do we <laughs> do we Absorbing Man this? Oh my gosh. No, we got, we got the Hella though. We got the Hella though. I think we have to. It's all about who wins, and I don't think... Oh, snap. I just don't think he can get over the top. I'm a little worried about giving him that. Do we just play this over here? Let's do it. This is madness. This is so crazy. I think we're fine, right? I think we just go Corvus over here. We don't discard anything, but this Morbius is so big. It protects us from so much. I I don't know what he could have, but I feel strangely confident. You see there, Proxima died Victory. for the better cause. Corvus was ready to go out with her. That was awesome. We've got the husband and wife to kick us off. Corvus, Proxima... Helicarrier Black Bolt. Okay, a lot of the big cards now. We can wait to play Corvus. 
Uh, again, the Morbius isn't bad, but I uh, don't hate what we have so far. Thanos decks can be a bit tougher to attack, as we know. More cards, the better. We'll take a Juggernaut. And we have Modok. A lot of cards, guys. A lot of cards. Uh, obviously, Corvus here is just good. There's most of these we don't care. I guess Modok we'd like to keep. Maybe Hella if we top deck that. We've got the Morbius. So now we definitely want to keep this. We hope we don't get rid of it. But we do need to play this now. This is going to be our opportune time. So let's play this. Hope we don't get rid of the Morbius. If we do, we can still Hella. There you go. Not bad. Okay. This is so tough what to do here, guys. Because we want to play our Morbius down before we Modoc. Uh, Modoc is a huge pop-off here. Like a crazy pop-off. We also like the Red Skull Taskmaster. I'm thinking, guys, we go Red Skull Taskmaster on five. Turn six, we play Modoc and Morbius together. That feels so good. Unless we get Hella, but let's do this now. Okay, so he goes Magneto now. We're beating that. We got six power to go. We pretty much are good with anything. Let's definitely go Taskmaster here. We nearly tie it. And then this is crazy. This is when we just go with the Modoc Morbius. This is such a good play. Like, I think we do this and this. The only thing is we want Proxima to jump to the right, the correct location. So I think we go... Will he challenge that side? Maybe. I think this is the play here. Proxima goes here. We have 21 there. That's not a bad idea. It, this is kind of a tougher turn to, to calculate, but I think this is ultimately it. Oh, crap. So Proxima's going to go to that lane. Little dicey. However, one, two, three, four, five. Are we going to lose by two? I am Apocalypse. Oh, what a bummer, guys. Barely lost. I'm going to keep that in there because I think that's more uh, on my misplay. But damn, I mean, that shows the potential of just the attack patterns. That was a was a really cool play line. But sometimes that's just how, that's how it works, right? You got to take the L's. All right, so we have Hella, Apoch, Stature... And a little Hella Carrier. A lot of similar names to discard. Proxima Midnight, Moon Knight, Hella Hella Carrier. Black Vortex. First card you play here becomes a random six cost card. Uh well, we don't we 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 don't want to play anything yet. Whoa. Dude, that's scary. That could be anything. I guess because it, since it could be destroyer, maybe we need to play it now. And uh let's go ahead and play this. This seems like a super strong play line i mean yeah he could play morbius down or something but uh i mean we could just get rid of the helicarrier whatever he plays on three is probably important he might gambit though as well okay cool no matter what we're happy we discard the apoc kill the helicarrier and what six cost do we get orca oh my god <laughs> Well, sign me up. All right, do we just play Proxima on curve here? Probably. Uh, let's play her left side. Uh, okay. I was going to say not Hella. That's fine with us. We got the huge Hella play now. Um, I'm thinking, yo, this is so risky. Because what do we have? Just statue though. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go Corvus left side. It's like we have Orca holding on the fort. Yeah, so we didn't have to. I am reborn. Hella was fine if we lost her. And then there's Black Bolt. So can he beat 16 mid is the question. I think we just play big old Helicarrier or uh, Apoc over here. Yeah. Like, what are you going to, what is he going to do? We have three lanes that are just cooking. 
minions to me. Now what just happened there essentially because he also got the disc. What did he just get with that Victory. Dracula? 11, 10 power. So what did he Dracula got a dra what in the absolute hell does that mean? I don't know. We won. Oh, a little super flow with a cost heavy deck. We are here for it, guys. Let's get Morbius down turn one. We already got the Corvus. Helicarry is great. We don't care if we kill Black Bolt or not. Gambit would be a great top deck here. Oh. Okay, we have Hella. Man, Gambit would be nuts here. Okay, we kind of just hope we get rid of Hella Carry first and then something else after that. But uh, if we get rid of Hella, we get rid of Hella. This is insane if we get like Moon Knight or anything. We could have also put Corvus mid and gone crazy. Let's see what Hella Carrier gives us though. Okay. We can work with that. Especially the Miss Marvel. We love that. So, okay, hear me out, guys. We could Miss Marvel in the mid. I get it. It's awesome. Or we do exactly what we're trying to do. We just attack the hell out of this guy, man. We kill this whole guy's hand. He does have Morbius. So I guess he wants cards discarded. But if we discard the right ones... He's probably screwed. I gosh, it's so risky because like he could have swarm. I get it. I get it, guys. But this is just too tempting. We got to do it. Corvus. Okay. We're, we're kind of helping him out just a little bit. Wait, what else did I even get rid of, dude? I don't even know. Helicarrier. Okay. Well, uh, we, we, that backfired a little bit. We had a feeling it would. We had a feeling what he has a bunch of random cards and he didn't draw again though. So we're gonna we're gonna pretend that was a great play. Um all right, so we have Black Swan now. And Moon Knight. I like both those plays. Let's attack his best lane. Okay, we kill his other collector, which thank god. And he plays the man thing from the helicarrier. His Dracula lost a lot of value, right? Because he doesn't know what to do with that now. Uh, there's so many cards in his hand, you know, that he doesn't want. Modok is massive for the Morbius in the mid. Uh, I feel like we don't... I was going to say we don't play that yet, but I guess we do. Like, this is a really big play. Like, we could do this. Modok over here. It's something. Or we just Modok left now. What are we leaving in the hand there? Um, I think we do this. Let's go ahead and just do the Elsa and Wolfsbane. I get it. I know, but we're going to Modok last as like a little surprise. And we definitely don't hate that. All right. He gets rid of our Nebula. That's a win too. Wow. He got a lot of interesting cards there. Uh... I think we got a shot, man. We're still beating this lane. We're not going to snap. I think they'll leave, but we get our Morbius up by two. Odds are, you know, he's going to play into that. He could Morbius left side, but I mean, we he's working with Helicarrier cards with a couple top decks. Obviously, a little risky to attack a discard deck with Black Bolt, but uh, this one paid out. Could have been Swarm. We could have given him like a million plays there, but that also to me seemed fine. I am reborn. If this is Modok... Oh, it's Apoc in the middle, huh? Okay, what does he have in his... What did he get from the Helicarrier then? Just a bishop? The hell? All right, guys. Well, we cleaned up pretty much all the locations there, so we'll take that. Victory. And uh, that one other card, we'll never know what it was. All right, so we have Hella, Black Bolt, Stature, and Apoc. So all of our huge cards here need some of our lower options. Mirror Dimension. We did get Morbius... Morbius is huge for cloning bats, so we're definitely going to play him there. Weird that guy didn't go demon left side. Bit odd, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to keep playing Morbius left so we don't have to. Alright, 
Great rock slide is fine. We got the gambit now. We can Morbius now. I think we go gambit. Well, yeah, gambit now is probably a good play. All of these aren't bad. Let's go gambit now. That's fine. Oh, we kill, unfortunately killed one of our, uh, our clones, but that's okay. We'll win it back. We have Black Bolt now, Corvus. Corvus is super interesting here. Black Bolt lets us play a huge pop-off, but I think we got to go Corvus here. And we're going to go Corvus left side. Yeah, we're going to go Corvus left side here. The Hella, it would be nice to bring back, but not essential. And if we need to get these guys up, we can play Corvus again. We're going to play this, and I think we're going to snap. Although, he has another Dark Hawk, too. Oh, snap. We're going to snap into this. I know he's got the other Dark Hawk, but I feel pretty good. Oh, my gosh. We keep the hell up. We lost the other Corvus. That's kind of a bummer, but... Nice. Oh, no. We got to, we got to clone him because it's at the end. That's huge. Uh, okay, I think we just play Hella, guys. Yeah? Hella brings back a lot of freaking power. It discards even more stuff. I think we go Hella right side. He's probably going to hit us with the uh, with the Annihilus, but that's fine. I don't think this... I don't, I don't think this is going to lose. I'm trying to think. Yeah, let's go right side. That's fine. Because we get to bring back the Hella Carrier for 10. We're discarding more Minions options. To me. There's another Morbius. There's the Hella Carrier. All right. Okay. I thought maybe his game plan was to Nihilus. I guess he didn't He didn't draw it. And I was mistaken. Victory. We didn't have another discard to get these guys up. But that was still uh, obviously a, a solid, solid play line there. And we uh, got the win. Negative 17 ain't going to win it for them. All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to go the safer route, remember there is that collector version of the deck. The attack, though, is a ton of fun. I haven't seen anything really like it and haven't been able to play to good success with the style of deck like that. I feel like we're just at the infant stages of cooking it up. Moon Knight Gambit, some of my favorite cards in Snap. Hopefully you guys enjoyed again and uh, have a good one. Have a great one. Happy snapping.